Saturday, August 14th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. You might be hearing Billy. He was on the sofa, but he jumped off. It's already quite warm here this morning. It's uh, about 10.30 a.m. London time. I think it's going to be a hot day. So he just wanted to go on the wood floor. Uh, today, first of all, I want to talk about an article that I wrote for my uh, blog, Maneco64.net. You might not know about my blog. I do write once in a while uh, on that blog, maybe uh, once every other month, sometimes a little more. Uh, not that much, but uh, I, I do keep a, a, a blog. And uh, with August 15th coming up tomorrow, which is a Sunday, and August 15th, 1971, having been the Sunday, it's going to be an interesting live stream uh, tomorrow night, uh, my usual time, 9 p.m. London, which is 4 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I've said it before in the last few weeks that we're going to cover uh, the closing of the gold window by uh, President Nixon and, and what it uh, meant and what it still means. Yes, we'll do our usual Q&A as well. And uh, this article I wrote this week, I posted it on my blog a, a couple of days ago. Haven't announced it yet. Some people have read it already. People uh, look at my blog once in a while. And I entitled it A Sunday to Remember. It's just over 1,200 words. And it's all about uh, what I think uh, Bretton Woods and the closing of the gold window meant. So... If you want to prep for tomorrow's live stream, if you uh, want to know a little more about it and then ask me questions, I think there's some questions that I didn't answer maybe in that article. Yeah, read it. Uh, I'm going to put a link to this article below in the description uh, to my blog, Maneco64.net. So uh, today I want to talk about gold. Silver did well yesterday, it did outperform, but we're gonna just look at uh, gold in the technical picture. Does that mean I don't think silver is gonna do well? Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. It's just that the technical picture for gold looks very interesting. And uh, yes, I don't trade gold. I, I hold physical gold and silver, but many of you might want to uh, trade. Many of you I know do trade uh, paper gold <laughs> and uh, even though I personally don't encourage people to do that it, it's up to the individual to decide and uh, I like looking at the technicals as well I follow the markets every day I've been following it since I started uh, uh, my professional life uh, at a small bank in Geneva yes <laughs> I, I have to see what's going on and uh, Today I'm going to show you a, a, a weekly uh, chart of gold first, and it's uh, a bar chart, of course, uh, which shows all the moves uh, during the week, the high, the low, the open, the close. And then I'm going to show you a line chart, a weekly line chart, which only shows you uh, the close of the week. And I think that kind of chart is more suitable for people who don't trade gold, who are maybe uncomfortable with what the gold price is doing. But uh, I spoke about a formation, a candlestick formation, which is a technical formation in technical analysis. I spoke about it in the beginning of April this year because I, I thought gold had uh, hammered a, a bottom, as I said, in, in two videos actually that I made in the beginning of April. And it was proven to be right. I'll tell you what a hammer is, and I'm going to uh, access or reference technical analysis explained by Martin Pring. I've had this book for a very long time, since the early, early to mid-90s when I started working in the futures market. I wanted to learn more about technical analysis. So uh, Martin Pring here talks about... Uh, a hammer and this is what he says a hammer is identical to a hanging man but occurs after a market decline when it is a bullish sign 
it gets its name from the idea that the price is hammering out a bottom. In effect, it represents the kind of trading day or week, I would say, in this case that I'm looking at, when the price temporarily slips quite sharply for there is a run on the selling stops. Well, that's what happened on Friday, not, not this Friday, the Friday before during non-forum, and then on Sunday evening, uh, Monday morning, uh, London and Asian times. Nevertheless, the technical position is sufficiently constructive to cause buyers to come into the market and push the price back up towards or above the opening level. So that's what a hammer is. Uh, there was a hammer uh, on the weekly chart. As you can see here, I circled it at the end of March. And uh, that gave me a signal that gold would go higher. And we did. We went from around 1750 all the way up to around 1920 in a matter of weeks there, maybe a couple of months. Uh, of course, last week, uh, gold took a, a, a beating, uh, especially after non-farm farm payroll number, which was better than expected, but really didn't warrant uh, <laughs> as much selling as we got. Uh, I think as Pring says, there were stops that were run. Uh, the bullion banks are good at knowing where the technical levels are, where the hedge funds have their stops. And hedge funds, a lot of times, our clients to the bullion bank. So that's what happened last week. You can see the red candle. That's the market going down. So we had a, another hammer this week. And, and Pring talks about the daily uh, price action. In this case, is the weekly price action. And it uh, corresponds exactly uh, to what he said here. Uh, you start the trading period uh, with weakness. Uh, the stops are run. That was Monday overnight, Sunday and Monday. Uh, the gold market dropped to like 1660, I think, at least in my system. Some people have it a little higher, <laughs> but that's what happens in the gold market when you have futures, when you have all paper instruments, you have different prices uh, trading. There's not just one price. And uh, Towards the end of the week, uh, especially in the last uh, couple of days of the week, gold uh, did really well. We were up over 1% uh, each of the last two days, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can see here, the hammer uh, in August that we've had just in this past week left like a green hammer, which means that actually the, the market finished up on the week despite uh, starting really badly, dropping over $100 from the previous close. And you can see that uh, the uh, hammer back in the uh, end of March didn't have like a, a, a positive finish to the week. Uh, it had a, a red uh, head to it. And despite that, though, we saw a bottom and the market went up uh, and uh, traded almost uh, nonstop towards uh, 1900 and just above 1900. So what do I think this uh, all means uh, to uh, the price of gold, to the technical picture? Well, uh, looking at the fundamentals, nothing's changed. Uh, we had a CPI that came out actually in line and was actually a little higher than expected. Uh, I had an expectation from uh, investing.com of 5.4, came out at 5.5, I think. Uh, we had a PPI that was the highest in years. Uh, we have a Federal Reserve really that cannot afford to raise rates because of the debt burden that Uncle Sam is carrying, uh, because of the deficits that Uncle Sam is uh, running every year. That creates even more debt. As I've said many times before, technical analysis is not a perfect science. <laughs> it's about the probabilities uh, back in the end of March, uh, there was a bottom, and I guess I was right about that bottom. Uh, and uh, right now, I think there is another bottom, and, and I think this hammer is even more bullish. I think in the in a matter of weeks, maybe a, a couple of months, we could see uh, gold testing the old highs just below 2100. 
Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, am I telling people to go out there and buy gold or trade gold? No. This is just my opinion of looking at the markets. You need to do your own homework. Maybe you should think about buying uh, a book on technical analysis yourself. Uh, how do you uh, look at fundamentals? Well, fundamentals are things like uh, what's going on in the economy, what's going on with monetary policy, what are the central banks doing in terms of their balance sheet and interest rates. You need to do that yourself. Um, I did learn from other people in the beginning, but then you have to uh, do the work yourself. And that's what I mean. Uh, and now I want to show you another chart for those of you who are not really interested in trading. And this chart is a, a line chart. It only shows uh, the closes every week. And this is going back five years. And as you can see, uh, gold here bottom uh, in March 2021 on a weekly basis. Uh, as you can see, 1st of March 2021 at 1700 that's only on a closing basis and after that it's been uh, going up ever since what I'm trying to show you here with this line chart is that yes gold did bottom in March and we're still above that level and everything else in the middle is noise so gold still looks pretty good there I would say though looking at the shorter term or the the bar chart uh, shows me that actually the situation is quite bullish for gold now. But yes, there are some people out there talking about the commitment of traders for the futures, and that apparently is looking very good as well. Uh, it looks like the hedge funds, who are usually wrong when, uh, when trading futures, they, they've closed out most of their longs, I think, and the, the swaps or the bullion banks, uh, they've lowered a lot their net short positions and they've had a tough time uh, closing out a, a lot of their shorts uh, uh, in this past week. Because on Monday, uh, I saw, well, it was Monday morning around, around one o'clock, uh, just after midnight here in London. I saw gold drop over $100 to like $16.60. And then during the whole uh, trading day on Monday, it came right back up above 1700. It took a couple of days to stabilize uh, around 1720, 1740. And then finally, in the last two days of, of the week, it just went uh, up quite sharply. Yesterday, silver came, came back to life and outperformed gold. Silver was up over two and a half percent. So that was very encouraging as well. So yeah, that's how I see gold and silver. I look forward to uh, speaking with you uh, tomorrow and answering your questions during our special Bretton Woods gold window closing uh, live stream at 9 p.m. London, 4 p.m. Eastern time. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care. Bye.